Can we talk about fish and chips fast food? Oh, sorry, we're starting again. Yeah, let's talk about fish and chips fast food. Okay, let's talk about it. Big week? Yeah, very yeah, big week. Huge. Every week's a big week. <laughs> um, Firstly, I want to tell everybody who's listening, all our listeners, about our fish and chip, um, fish chips fast food page on Facebook. Right. It's really easy to find. It's facebook.com slash fish chips fast food. Excellent. And when you get there, it looks like this. And uh, that's for people, I know you can't see it, but uh, videos, articles, bits and pieces on there. But you're more than welcome to comment, make notes, and more importantly, give us a like. Yes, everybody... we want lots of likes. Yeah, well, we've only got 20, so it's a bit sad. So come on, guys, uh, give us a few likes um, and um, we'll be very grateful, won't we? Well, definitely. Extremely grateful. And we also want to talk a little bit about our show. Now, we've got a show over on iTunes. Okay. So we've got the Chips and Chatter show over on uh, iTunes. We have. And we would love some reviews. Definitely. So you head on over to iTunes. Um, I'm just going to obviously view it in iTunes. And you'll see that when you open it up in iTunes, uh, there's a little button there to subscribe. So we love subscribers. Give us a subscribe. There's nine shows in there currently. This will make the 10th. Uh, we should have a little birthday cake, shouldn't we? Ten shows. Oh, yes. Any excuse for cake. That's right. So you can share it by using that link here, there, or I know you can't see this, Rebecca. But in ratings and reviews, if you hit that button, you can actually click to rate. So one star is I hate it. None of those, please. Yeah. Two stars, I don't like it. Three stars, it's okay. Four stars, it's good. And five stars, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It's great. And in my eyes, I'm always after five stars, so... So give us a five-star review, um, you know, only if you want to, but that would be f- absolutely marvellous. <laughs> All right, so that's the Facebook and the, and the iTunes um, uh, store. So the next thing, really, back, let's get back to our website. We've, got a new, we've had a new show posted up. Yeah. Kevin McWinney from McWinney Sausages. Brilliant show. Yes, and he was not telling porkies. That's right, he wasn't. And um, I think anybody who listens to this, it's uh, nothing really to do with sausages. He's a real uh, advocate for the um, for, for, for quality products, quality in, quality out. He's been talking about the way, uh, you know, about mechanically separated meat, mechanically recovered meat and desinued meat, all these horrible pink slime th- things you've heard about in the news. He talks about, you know, how the industry needs to start uh, being honest with what goes into a product. Yeah. He did actually say on the show, he said... Uh, you know, when you see a recipe that says new and improved, yeah. it says, you know what? We've been cooking sausages for 120 years. If we have to use new and improved, we should get out the game. Well, my motto is you can't improve on perfection. <laughs> but it's a really great show. Uh, so have a listen. And more importantly, you know, leave a comment. You yeah. know, under, underneath the show, there's an option to leave a comment. Just uh, dig in, put your uh, details in and just give us a comment. You must have some views on this. Uh, it's a real topical uh, subject. And I think um, people should really uh, get engaged. Definitely. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear other people's views, Mark, on, on what's going on in, in the industry at the moment in terms of uh, all the news that's uh, been reported on content. So uh, That's right. Yeah. Well, it's important that the, the punter, the client, the customer knows what they're eating. Yes. Yeah. You know, more and more people are asking that question now more than ever, um, you know. The, uh, the red-tabbed press has, um, has certainly highlighted um, content of products and um, people, are, people are seriously now questioning it, now more than ever. Hey, I'll tell you something else. I, didn't, um, I captured this as well. This is about real food, real jobs. Um, talking about a new relationship with food, it's quite interesting this. But he talks it about, you know, you get into an airport and, you know, you're ready for your flight or whatever and you're going to go and get a bit of food. Yeah. And you need something to eat that's quick. But everything's shrink-wrapped and everything's fast. And if you're a real food lover, mm. what do you do? Because it's true, isn't it? You're, very, you're limited. You are. Well, you are. are. This is quite cool. The, the LAX, obviously over in America, but they've got a culinary training program now. Right. So they're really sort of pushing out um, a bit of gastro food into the airports. That's great news. That's great news because I'm, I'm not really a lover of some of the offerings that you have at at airports and uh, 
you know, I, I think that will certainly take off. I, I hope that we follow in the same footsteps. I hope so. One of our colleagues, um, one of our friends, uh, that we, obviously we both know, I won't mention him, but he's uh, working with a company that are looking to offer bespoke food uh, for airlines. So right. it's, it's, you know, proper kitchen, making absolutely great food that gets uh, obviously made that day, sealed and put into the uh, air containers and served on the flights. Really, really top-notch food for um, by designer, not designers, but by, you know, top chefs. Excellent. I'd pay a few extra quid for that rather than the, uh, you know, the plastic burgers that you get and the bit of bacon. It's not very good, is it, on flights? Well, no, you pay. I think you, it's seriously, seriously overpriced for what they deliver, um, quantity and quality. Um, I'd much sooner pay just a few extra pounds and get, get something uh, quite appetising. Yeah, I mean, you do eat quite well in uh, business, I have to admit. Yes. But you know what? They could do a lot more to improve the economy, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, uh, did you see um, Heidi Klum? No, I didn't see that. Oh, Heidi Klum. Um, little video on Heidi Klum. She's um, done a commercial for a burger. Right. So she's seen chowing down on a big juicy burger. So um, there she is. That is a what that is a huge burger. Um she plays sexy Mrs. Robinson in New Carl Jr. commercial. Right. But um yeah that is a good looking burger. <laughs> I can think I've of, not seen it, so I'll take your word for it. Yeah, Mark. I can think of worse people to um, feed me a burger. That's that's just plain rude. Yes. Say <laughs> no more. Yeah, it's for a burger chain in America, but I'm liking it. She's, yeah. she's licking her fingers suggestively. <laughs> well, if, hey, you know, sex sells. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Anyway, back on to uh, real, r- the real news. Um, I'm really liking this, um, this uh, secret menu thing. We're going to get onto that in a minute. But Burger King are rolling out turkey burgers over in New York. Fancy a bit, something a bit healthier? Yeah, well, they, they say, but I don't know. If, but, I go to a, if I go to a burger place, I like to have a burger. I very rarely have yeah, any other too. offering, really. Um, but, but I like um, having the option, though. Well, yes, everybody likes options, don't they? It says McDonald's are going to be, um, I said they're thinking of offering a low-calorie version of the Egg McMuffin, just made with egg whites. Um, So I think everybody, this is a good trend. I think people are giving people an option to have something that, you know, when you stood there and you think, well, I don't really want to have a great big Whopper, so I will have a turkey. Or yeah. maybe, maybe I had a Whopper for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really, and, you know, and I'm back in there for the afternoon and I really think, well, you know what, two Whoppers, it's a, it's a bit much. Yeah, in one day anyway. D- uh, definitely. Um, so what about this then? Do you, um, do you like the old balsamic vinegar? Well, I love balsamic vinegar. On chips? I really, really do like it. W- what about um, on chips? With my salad and things, but with fish and chips, mm. no, it just doesn't do it for me yeah i think i'm going to get some strange looks yeah you know when i ask for where's the balsamic vinegar on the uh when i'm on the stood on the other side of the fryer no i think who's this posh northern lad hey but it says sales of old-fashioned salt malt vinegar sorry are down four percent while trendy balsamic is up 40 percent so it's trendy people are buying it yeah but it's you know, if you're going to have a, a good old portion of fish and chips, I, I just can't imagine why you would have balsamic with it. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. Now, I'm dying to share this. Dying to share this. This is the um, the secret menu thing. Did you spot that? that are you going to share a secret with us, Mark? Well, you know. These are secrets. They're not secrets, the guy says. These are just hidden. Yes. But it's interesting because I think this is a fantastic marketing ploy because people talk about it, don't they? Of course they do, because everybody wants to know what the secret is, don't they? It so. is. Well, you you know, when you go into a restaurant, I mean, I, I have now and again asked to change things on the menu, but I know you have. And I do, regularly yes, when do. I go to my local Italian, I do it every time. I tend to have the same dish, and um, I, I quite like what their offering is, but I like a couple of extras in it and something else removed. So um, every time I go in, Andy, the uh, the waiter will come over and ask me is it my kind of usual secret special and I was in there a few weeks ago and I certainly got a couple of looks from people surrounding me and uh, they couldn't wait to see what I got delivered when I asked for my secret special. It's only complete curiosity 
Um, it's that whole word secret makes them think, oh. It works. What is she having? And so, uh, yes. Yeah, so I, I like this. This is quite creative. Uh, so I, I had a quick look around and I found um, over in America, of course. But you know what? It's on its way. It always is. But I like the uh, I like the names that they've given these secret menus. Yes. And um, I know I could get into trouble for this. You're probably going to, but Maybe. You'll, you'll do it anyway. So yeah, I probably will. Now, the, the first one was the In-N-Out Burger. Now, we haven't got that over here. So um, let's not mention that for now. But I do like what they do with fries because they offer different versions, you know, animal fries and uh, fries well and fries light, fries light well, fries extra. So these are all different types of fries that are fried differently to give a different, you know, a different choice. Yes. But if you didn't know, it makes you feel good getting what you want. It does. It does. But McDonald's have got some pretty um, pretty good secret recipes, secret menu, sorry. They've they got, sure have. They've got the Monster Mac, the Monster Mac burger, which is an eight patty burger. You know, for if you're feeling a bit peckish. Yeah, yeah, a bit. You, you wouldn't want to hit uh, McDonald's, would you, at 10.31 in the morning, miss your egg banjo, your egg butty, and have to think, well, I'll fancy a Monster Mac. <laughs> You'd get some strange <laughs> looks at 10.31 with an eight patty burger in your hand. Mm, you would, unless you're <laughs> on uh, Man versus Food, in which uh, case it would be welcomed. Well, here's the thing. You can have a Mac 10.35. Wow, what's one of those, Mark? Well, it's a, when the when the sausage menus, the breakfast menus finished at 10.30. Mm -hmm. You ask for a Mac 10.35, you get an Egg McMuffin inside of the McDouble. Mm. So it's a burger in a burger. Wow. So it must be the burgers that are slightly, you know, the ones that are just warm. Yes. The ones that are left over. So a Mac 10.35. So I figure that's a job for you. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to uh, visit McDonald's at 10.35 a.m. and uh, request, uh, request a muck 10.35 and see what expression I get. That's right. Take a picture. I think I'll have to. And we'll pop it on the blog. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> It'd be quite interesting. <laughs> they, do, they do a land, sea and air. So a land, sea and air, please. That's a beef patty, a chicken patty and a fillet of fish all in one sandwich with tartar sauce. Wow. Whew, hungry. That's a right mixture of flavours going on there. I know. Um, and controversially, and possibly not making the cut of this show, the McGangbang. Mm. Now, I think that's a great title for the show, but I don't think I'm going to get away with it. No. But it's it's tr it says it, it's on the internet, must be true. Well, of course. It's a McChicken sandwich inside of a double cheeseburger. <laughs> the wow. McGangbang. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to go to McDonald's tomorrow, and I want to ask, I want you to ask the guy behind the counter, "Can I have a McGangbang, please?" <laughs> and get your camera out. I think that one, Mark, I'm going to delegate to you. Uh, doesn't have the same approach. Anyway, let's move quickly on. To, yes, to the a suicide burger. The suicide burger. I love this. Four beef patties. Four slices of cheese, bacon, and a special sauce. Now, I reckon I could manage that. You know what intrigues me about this? Go on. Not the four beef patties or the four slices of cheese or even the bacon. It's the special sauce. What's special? <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but it's a, it's a cool thing to ask for if you're trying to impress your girlfriend. Suicide burger. <laughs> mm, it doesn't really, no, it doesn't you know, especially impress if you're one of these. I'd, I'd be more for the rodeo burger myself. Yeah, me too, actually. That looks all right. Cheeseburger with barbecue sauce and onion rings. And I like the um, I like the frings. Mm. Half, half onion, onion rings, rings mm. half French fries. Yeah, frings. I'll have a portion of frings, please. It's worth a try, isn't it? You could give it a go. Give it a go. Well, there's a few there. There's um, So McDonald's do it, Burger King do it, uh, Taco Bell do it. Starbucks have got a load. I know. Um, French got... vanilla. I like the sound of a French vanilla. French vanilla, where's that? Oh, half, half toffee, toffee nut. and half vanilla. Ooh, they do a biscotti frappuccino. Yeah, I Captain those. Crunch, strawberries and creme frappuccino mixed with hazelnut syrup. See, you'd never know these were around if you didn't listen to this show. No, definitely not. We have our uses. Yeah, so what I want, I want all our all our listeners to go out and start ordering this, and let's get let's get it happening over here. Definitely, because I'm fancying I'm fancying a. Um, 
I could just whop a quick um, gangbang. <laughs> yeah, finish off with a suicide burger. Wash it down with um, some Captain Crunch. <laughs> you could go wild. You certainly could. Anyway. I love that. Secret menus. It's a good marketing ploy. We should um, maybe have some ideas. Some of our listeners can think of ideas they could uh, launch their own secret menus. And maybe we could have a little spot on the website where people could list list their menu ideas, their secret menu ideas. Something different and innovative. Yeah, let's see. We we should offer a prize for the person that comes up with the best one. A (laughs) McGangbang? There's an offer you can't refuse. I think that's the end of the show, isn't it? <laughs> on that note. Swiftly moving on. <laughs> swiftly moving on. Any, is there any more news? Um, More news. Gosh, I, I can't even recall what we've covered, you know, Mark. What have we covered today? We've, we've covered the... Facebook. We've covered the website. We've covered um, our podcast shows. We've covered secret menus. We've covered McWinnie's show this week. Have we yet discussed? We've done the Heidi Klum. That, you don't forget yeah. Heidi. Uh, uh, no, clearly not. Don't um, forget secret menus what, and definitely don't forget airport food. No. More importantly, I want to discuss the fact that bananas <laughs> are as good a choice as cookies or French fries. Is that fast food? It is, isn't it? Bananas. Yeah, well, French fries come in there. So what, you, what you're saying is, but, forget forget the banana when you're feeling a bit peckish. Yeah. Reach for the chocolate chips. Well, my thought is, it says cookies or French fries. So a portion of French fries followed by the cookie jar. Because what they're <laughs> saying is that bananas have more nutrients than cookies. But actually, cookies fill you up for longer. Um, they have the same sugar crash um, as a cookie, bananas do. So, you know, if it's a chocolate chip cookie or a banana, they're actually saying that will satisfy your hunger would be a chocolate chip cookie. What else satisfies my hunger? Well, oranges and apples are very good for you, as are grapes. Mm -hmm. And we know that beef and brown pasta are very, very good for you at satisfying your hunger. But top of the list is potatoes and fish. There you go. Vindicated. If you want to be satisfied, get down your local chippy. Beat some gangbang, fish and chips. Does for me, Mark. Hey, awesome. Listen, I think that's the news for today. Let's wrap up. I would love to thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Um, so thanks. And also, uh, don't forget, pop across to Facebook. Give us a like. Get yourself across to iTunes. Give us a review. Now, it doesn't have to be five star, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. But that would be great. <laughs> and don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments on the website. Have I, co- have I covered everything? I think you certainly have, Mark. Let's do news next week. Okay, see you then. Thanks, Rebecca. Bye.